All right, so let me do a screen share and we'll pull Joe's slides up. And sorry about that, Joe, and sorry about that, everyone. You saw the post that I made. Um, <laughs> lost power, Wi-Fi and all. So only so much we could do. I could still see you going on my cell phone because I switched over to data on my cell phone, but but the Zoom would only go so long because when the wife, once the Wi-Fi went down, forget about it. So, so we're back and um, now we're gonna go through Joe's slides um, from the beginning. Okay, Joe, take it away. Well, I'm gonna take it away. Well, I only picked a, a, a particular kind of injury to discuss. Um, Stephanie did a great job of telling you how you should handle injury cases in general. And it's important that you document your symptoms, get medical care, and because in this day and age, you're going to be expected to have documentation of everything. That's what people expect. And um, one of the most common injuries, um, and they are the most misunderstood and a lot of times misdiagnosed are traumatic brain injury, TBIs, head injuries. Um, as you can see on this slide, there's 3 million cases annually. And it is the most common cause of brain damage. What that, what, what that means is, is significant in children and young adults. 40% of trauma fatalities, that's 40% are because of TBI. And there's three different kinds, severe, moderate, and mild. And as you can see by the numbers, the vast majority are mild, but that doesn't mean, mild does not mean that it is not serious, significant, or life-changing, okay? Moderate and severe are Obviously, they're more than mild, but if you have severe head injury, that is a something that there isn't any dispute about what you have and what the consequences are. And it's pretty sure that there isn't going to be much legal dispute if you have a moderate head injury. And what that means is the standard tests that are available out there, the MRIs and maybe even a CAT scan, will show somewhat abnormalities. If you have a moderate or severe TBI, your behavior and, and your overall physical condition is not going to be normal, okay? It's the other 80% that arise out of car. Well, we can see the most common causes of, on our next slide, I think, hopefully. Oh, well, we'll go back to rotational injuries, but most common causes are, are car accidents, Try, yeah, car accidents because your brain, your head is sloshing around in the car, slips and falls, the same reason you're banging your head, you're, you're, you're whiplashing your head, or just hitting your head in general, okay? And so what happens is, is that you are, have a hard shell with soft material in it, and it's moving back and forth, and it's being injured. And why we have, if you've seen in our advertising and, and we've discussed it, is that side impact injuries in cars and rotational injuries in general, when you fall, cause substantially more TBI. And that's because if you, if you think about it, if you are trying to break a piece of metal, say a hanger, if, if you rotate it at the same time, you're moving it up and down, it breaks faster. And that's the same kind of thing. If you're spinning your brain and it's moving back and forth at the same time, it's going to cause more injury. And it is very important that you understand and that the medical providers and your family all understand that even a minor car accident can cause TBI, a minor, what you might think is minor, a fall where you didn't think much happened, banging your head, any kind of situation where your um, head is impacted or caused to abnormally move can cause 
TBI, which of course is why in, it's a sports injury. It's a sports injury and that's why helmets are a big deal because of the kind of things that can happen. And that's, that's what this diagram shows on rotational injury. And Joe, you know, I've, I've heard you talk about you know, the, the slight indications that, um, that are so common you know, you, you just, you're just not remembering things, you know, you are, you know, some of the day to day things in life that used to seem quite easy well, to do. Well, Angela, we have two people right here that have had <laughs> TBI, one who is a reluctant convert to the how significant they can be that Stephanie and me, I've always been uh, a, 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 a I've trained myself and learned a lot about this over 30 years and understand it. But even back then when I had my head injury, I didn't want to believe. And, and that's the normal human condition. We don't ever want to believe our brain isn't functioning normally. No way. Okay. And so it's very important for head injuries to be understood by family members, by those who see that you're not the same. What's going on here? Um, and the key is really, really resting, which is the hardest thing to do. But it is, it's very scary to have a head injury like that and think that you're never going to feel normal again. It lasted a whole lot longer than I thought it was going to last. And it was very, a, really a very frightening experience. And really the only remedy was for me to get in bed and lay there in a dark room for days on end. Yeah, and, and some people know and, and don't understand it, and some people don't get the right treatment, and some people are so stubborn about it that they refuse to acknowledge that anything is wrong. Uh, by the way, that's why divorce and, and family problems are far more significant in people who have TBIs because of the issues that they cause. Uh, job problems because it deals it hurts executive performance quite a bit. Um, so there is many many issues, and I I can say with that is in a car accident situation and a fall accident, I would say at least half the time our clients have mild traumatic brain injury and are not getting treatment for it because the doctors don't appreciate it and they don't bring it to the attention of their doctors. And fortunately, there are now tests um, that have become available that can find some types of mild traumatic brain injury. Until very recently, the only test was, it was written test, neuropsychological battery of tests that would be given and a neuropsychologist would evaluate you. But in the jargon of those who never want to pay the insurance companies, those are soft tests. And they don't, in their minds, they didn't really mean much or that they, you know, they thought that people could cheat on them. I don't, if you ever, if you ever saw them and, and had to do them, you can't cheat. But that, they were never regarded as something that was objective, like an x-ray or an MRI. And the problem with the MRIs and the CAT scans, they only show the really bad injuries. Because if you go back to those slides, which you don't have to do, the, the mild brain injury occurs when they're the microscopic dendrites, nerve endings get injured, they bleed a little bit. And those don't show on MRI and CAT scans, but they have developed a new test that do show mild traumatic brain injuries. And we are implementing those in our clients. We're encouraging them, if they, if they fit the right criteria, to go forward and be tested. For a lot of reasons, by the way, just knowing that you have an, a, a, an issue makes it way more easy for you to deal with it, makes it easier for your employer to deal with it. And it even makes the insurance companies easier. They, they can at least deal with it and say, okay, well, it's objective now. We're still not going to pay you that much, but at least they will not be able to argue that there is no objective 
document like an x-ray it's, it's really an enhanced thing and i'm and i'm sure and i'm sure joe there are different criteria for as many insurance companies as there are there's that many different criteria probably but are many of these more advanced tests are they covered by insurance and what the answer to that is no hmm. the answer to that is generally no because they don't want to pay uh, right. arguably they the sooner you, they should be paid for and the sooner you could objectively demonstrate a mild traumatic brain injury so that you can understand the treatment better uh it should be paid for but there the insurance companies this being the health insurance company's viewpoint is it doesn't matter if they've got these symptoms you should just treat them and we don't care if you can actually show on a ct scan that there's a reason for it so that's that's the rationale does it make sense well dealing with the health insurance industry a lot of stuff doesn't make sense but it all comes down to dollars and cents stephanie in your case what happened with you love what did you <laughs> was it fairly scaling in terms of like what kind of test did you have how did you um, go well i i was very lucky w when i was injured um there happened to be a, i was at a, a family picnic and there happened to be a doctor there and right away he said you have a concussion you're you're done get out of the sun you know it was a family outside party um i went to my primary doctor um went to a neurologist um was prescribed a bunch of medication that really just made me non-functioning um so i really just had to do nothing but rest. And um, luckily I have an accommodating employer. When I came back, I, I literally had to nap every day um, for several hours a day in the middle of the day to rest my brain. Um, the medications were way too heavy for me. I couldn't use them. Um, and it was just a matter of giving it the time to heal. People who, are, who have much more significant concussions than I did, I had a very mild one. Um, you know, go for occupational therapy, physical therapy. I really experienced the issue of not being able to find my words, not being able to process. Um, light was very difficult for me. Um, you know, any, any loud noises I couldn't handle. I didn't drive um, for, you know, over two weeks. It was, it, but for, in my case, it was mild. And so it was really just resting. Uh, all of the medications were, were too much for me. They actually made me um, non-functioning. I couldn't. Now it was, and I mean, I know this is very personal. Um, what happened? You were at an outdoor <laughs> party and what, what happened? Well, this is even better. But, uh, <laughs> oh, this is a great story. I was trying to be a fun mom. Um, and my wonderful, crazy brother made a giant slip and slide with giant garden sprinklers. And I went down a hill of a slip and slide, you know, that was probably, you know, 25 feet in, in width and a hundred feet in length and was going to run down the hill with my kids on the slip and slide. And I'm obviously way too old for that. Hit the back of my head on a stone, um, and you know, I was, I was really afraid. Um, and after that, my, my niece and nephew are very mad at me. Slip and slides are banned. Um, oh, and, and, they, and, and Stephanie and, ruined yes, on the, at the right side. And their, yes. So yeah, the kids are all very upset with me. If I had just, you know, stayed with the old people and not tried to go down the slip and slide, they would still be slip and sliding. But, um, Instead, Aunt Melissa says nobody can ever slip and slide again. She said, well, they, you know what, Stephanie, yeah. you might have been the sacrificial lamb because who knows? Because it's not as though it, the slip and slides down a hill with where there are rocks and everything else are great for kids. Yeah, there. it wasn't it wasn't my smartest choice. But my sister-in-law said, I knew you were really hurt when I asked you who the president of the United States was and you did not know. Um, and I and I didn't know where I was. So. Um, le oh, lesson scary. learned, I am now that's a true scary. believer in the traumatic brain injury, having experienced it myself. So, wow. All right. Well, so with that, again, apologies uh, for the uh, for the power interruption. <laughs> and um, we, Stephanie, where can people get a hold of you if they have follow up questions with respect to um, 
anything that you covered today on motor vehicle accidents and personal injury post COVID. Sure. Our Direct line is 315-474-3742. Um, we're on the web, Stanley Law Offices. You can send us um, through our website. You can chat live with us. You can email us. Um, we are working every day. We, some of us are working remotely. Some of us are, um, you know, allowed to come in for, you know, very limited time um, just to collect things, but we're all working from home, but everything um, channels through to us. So you can definitely reach us. And you're S Viscelli, V-I-S-C-E-L-L-I at stanleylawoffices.com, right? Yes. Or you can even email Stephanie at stanleylawoffices.com and it, it will come through either way. And same for you, Joe. Joe at stanleylawoffices.com. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, you both stay well, and uh, thank you for all of this insight. Again, this information will uh, is being recorded, and certainly we had our whole first half of this uh, on Facebook Live, and that will be archived there as well. Uh, StanleyLawOffices.com, as Stephanie said. The 1-800 number is 1-800-608-3333 with offices based in Syracuse. Uh, and Watertown, Binghamton, Rochester, and Montrose, PA. So goodbye for now. We will be back here with another webinar on Thursday, June 11th with attorney Megan Fallon and Joe Stanley to talk workers' comp, uh, work, workers' compensation claims. So thank you both. Take care. No thank more you. slides. No. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.